Hello, my friends, and welcome to our video lecture on topic C3.1, Integration of Body Systems. We are talking about plant bodies today, and this is additional higher level content. SL friends, you will not be assessed against any of this. Our guiding questions, what are the roles of nerves and hormones and integration of body systems? In plants, we're really talking more just about those hormones, not so many nerves in plants. We're also going to talk about the roles of feedback mechanisms in the regulation of those plant body systems. Our objectives for today, we're going to talk about the hierarchies of structures and then the needs for integration amongst those structures. We're going to define emergence. We're going to describe some of the effects of phytohormones, hormones that are in plants. We're going to explain phototropism. We're going to describe the interactions between auxins and cytokinins, and we're going to wrap up with a look at the effect of one more hormone, ethylene, on fruit ripening. We multicellular organisms have hierarchies of structures. Cells working together are tissues, groups of tissues working together are organs, organs working together are organ systems. And then of course we have that amazing organism. This organism has properties that do not exist in the organ systems themselves. We call this idea emergence. The more complex the organism becomes, these different properties begin to emerge. The organism can do things, has properties that do not exist in individual organs. That's so cool. If you haven't already watched this video, highly, highly recommend. All of these emergent properties require some integration amongst all those different little pieces and parts. When we talked about system integration in animals, we talked about the nervous system and the endocrine system, those hormones. For plants, we're really gonna focus just on hormones. And here we go. This list, though not complete, is a really good one. Lots of examples of phytohormones, phytohormones also known as plant hormones because phyto literally means plant. Phytohormones, just like animal hormones, are chemical signals. They are going to result in some signal cascades that cause some kind of response in a cell. That response is often gene expression. There are lots of jobs that phytohormones take care of. These are just three of the big categories of those jobs, growth, development, and response to stimuli. Germination is going to be a response to stimuli and also some growth. It's where that tiny baby plant pops out of its seed because of some temperature stimuli, some hydration stimuli. Here we've got some growth. We have flowering. This is a developmental change in the plant that is controlled by hormones. We can see lots of hormones have more than one job. We see that some jobs are controlled by many, many hormones. We are gonna focus mostly on auxin for growth. We're gonna also talk a little bit toward the end of the lecture about cytokinins and ethylene. If you're wondering what even is abscission, this just means things falling off a plant, like leaves in the fall. Tropisms are responses to stimuli that result in differential growth. Differential growth just means that one part of the plant is growing faster or more slowly than our other parts of the plant. This often is seen in the roots and the shoots. Sometimes we might have positive tropisms, in this case geotropism, where the roots are growing toward gravity. We can also call this gravitropism. We can have negative geotropism or gravitropism where the plant is growing away from gravity. Kind of cool that a single plant can have both positive gravitropism in the roots and also negative geotropism in the shoots at the same time. Here are some more examples of tropisms. This is phototropism. This plant is growing toward light. That's going to be a positive tropism. Here we have some hydrotropism. The roots are growing toward the water. Thigmotropism is growth in response to touch. These tendrils are touching that bamboo pole. And then last but not least, we have this super cool thing. We talked about it in our lesson on reproduction in plants. This is some chemotropism. And what we have here is a stigma and a style of a carpal of a flower. And here we have some pollen tubes that are growing down this style to the ovules in the ovaries. 
and that pollen tube grows toward the ovules due to some chemicals that attract it. So this is chemotropism, growth toward those chemicals in the ovules. We are going to focus for the next couple slides on phototropism, growth toward light. Phototropism depends on this hormone. This is in the auxin family. It specifically is indole-3-acetic acid. You might notice over here, IAA. IAA stands for indole-3-acetic acid. We don't need to know that. We just need to know that it is in the auxin family. What happens is so cool. So when we have the sunshine shining evenly on the plant, these molecules of auxin are spread out fairly evenly, and so growth is kind of even. But when we have the light shining unevenly on the plant, we have a shady side and we have a sunny side. What happens is that the auxins actually get pumped to the shady side of the plant. So we have more growth hormone over here. And so these cells on the shady side of the plant grow longer. They elongate on the shady side. And that actually pushes the plant toward the sun because of this differential growth, growth more on one side of the plant than on the other. Those auxin molecules get pumped to the shady side of the cell with some pretty cool proteins called auxin efflux carriers, which is a name that makes me mad because I taught you that if I call a protein a carrier, we've got some facilitated diffusion going on. And my friends, this is actually active transport. So I want you to put into your head auxin efflux carrier pump because it is some active transport. What happens is this, our beautiful auxin molecule is an acid. That's why it's called indole-3-acetic acid. It's an acid because of this part of the molecule. This is the carboxyl group, which makes it a carboxylic acid, just like fatty acids have carboxyl groups. That's what makes them acids. Amino acids have carboxyl groups. That's what makes them acids. This HA is an abbreviation for our auxin. When the auxin, and we do have some facilitated diffusion, when it moves into the cell, the pH of the cytoplasm actually causes a hydrogen, the hydrogen that is right here, it's actually gonna pop right off. It doesn't take its electron with it, so we have basically a hydrogen ion, a proton, if you will, and that proton is gonna get pumped out of the cell into the cellulose of the cell wall, we're going to talk about that a lot on the next slide. What's left is this molecule of auxin minus a hydrogen ion. We can call it indole-3-acetate, but we're going to abbreviate it with this A-. minus. The acid part minus the hydrogen. It's negatively charged. This guy, this ionized auxin, is going to get pumped by these efflux carrier pumps out of the cell and into the cell wall. But you know how we had those proton pumps over here? There are a lot of protons in the cellulose of the cell wall. And so the pH of cellulose is actually a little bit acidic. It has a pH of five. That means that there is a higher concentration of hydrogen ions floating around in the cellulose. And you know what's going to happen when this negatively charged auxin molecule runs into some protons in the cellulose of the cell wall? They're gonna pop right back together. And so that hydrogen that we popped off, it's gonna pop right back on. And then this guy can facilitate a diffusion, move into the next cell where it happens all over again. Once it's in the cytoplasm, that hydrogen pops off. We have that ionized auxin molecule, our indole-3 acetate. It gets pumped by our auxin efflux carrier pumps into the cytoplasm, uh, oh, sorry, into the cellulose where it picks up its hydrogen and it happens all over again. And this is how we get those auxin molecules to the shady side of the cell with auxin efflux carrier pumps. Efflux, by the way, just means exit. We're gonna focus now on that proton pump that was taking those hydrogen ions, those protons that popped off of the auxins, pumping those protons into the cellulose of the cell wall. 
here's the crazy cool thing. Those hydrogen ions, when they get pumped into the cellulose of the cell wall, they are going to activate some expansin enzymes. Those expansins are going to loosen the cellulose. When the cellulose is loose, it can stretch. And when it can stretch, the cell can grow. And so when we're pumping our auxins over to the shady side of the cell, more auxin here means more hydrogen ions getting pumped into the cellulose. More hydrogen ions in the cellulose means that the cellulose is looser and it can stretch and stretch. And this is how the cell can grow. The cellulose is more stretchable. It's a little bit looser and that allows the cell to expand. And if this cell is expanding and the cell is not expanding, the whole plant is going to go this way. And then of course, vice versa, if I'm pumping the oxygen this way, more hydrogen ions, more expansins, looser cellulose, the plant can stretch and grow this away. These auxin hormones are all about cell elongation and cell growth. So here we have an investigation. A plant was sprayed with some IAA. Again, that's indole 3 acetic acid. That's an example of an auxin. This caused those leaves to grow bigger. So we had cell and leaf expansion. A different hormone, this guy is BAP. BAP is one example of a cytokinin. BAP stands for, if you are curious, and we don't need to know this, but if you're curious, it is 6-benzylaminopurine. And again, you don't need to know it. It is a cytokinin. You do need to know that cytokinins are hormones that result in more cell division. So we have more mitosis. We have more leaves. Interesting, we have less branching in our roots. What's kind of cool is when this plant gets a little bit of both. When the auxins and the cytokinins are working together, we have more leaves and also bigger leaves. We have that beautiful root branching for more water absorption. This is an example of synergism. These two hormones are working together for the plant. Very interestingly, these same two hormones can work antagonistically. They can inhibit each other. So here we're looking at the shoot of a plant. The shoot is called the apex. The apex has apical dominance. That means that if this guy is allowed to grow, it's just going to grow taller and taller and taller. The apex is making some auxin. So lots of auxin is being produced because of this idea of lots of growth. That auxin is transported through phloem, because we know that phloem transports organic molecules like hormones down to the roots. Meanwhile, the roots are making lots of cytokinins. Those cytokinins are being transported also through the phloem to the shoots. Here we have a lovely axillary bud. It is not growing because the apex has that apical dominance. All of the hormone growth is leading to that shoot getting taller and taller. But what if I chop it off? What if we just go ahead and chop off that apex? Well, now we have a whole lot less auxin being produced, which means that we're not going to be able to inhibit that cytokinin anymore. And guess what happens? That axillary bud can grow. And so if you have a plant at home, then you want it to be lots of branches. Maybe you don't want it to be super tall. You want it to be super bushy. My friends, chop off those buds and then you'll get more branches. Voila! And our last hormone of the day is ethylene. Ethylene is a super cute little molecule, two carbons, four hydrogens. It's very nonpolar and very small, and therefore it is going to exist as a gas at room temperature. If you're in IB Chem or you've taken some other kind of organic chemistry class, you know that this actually should be called ethene. You're right, ethylene, same thing, different names. What we've got without ethylene is unripened fruit. It's green, it's not soft, it's not sweet, nobody wants to eat it. As soon as the seeds inside this fruit are mature and ready to be dispersed, ethylene is going to be produced. Ethylene is going to knock all of these guys off of the promoters. And we're going to have transcription and translation of all these proteins that are going to cause the fruit to turn some enticing color. 
and it's going to get sweet and it's going to get squishy and it might fall off of the plant and then some animal is going to come and eat the fruit and walk away and then poop out the seeds someplace else so that the seeds don't have to compete with the mama plant for resources. What's kind of cool, because ethylene is a gas, a little bit produced by one fruit can actually cause lots of other fruits to ripen, ripen. And so then the tree has all the fruits ripening at the same time, and they all fall off the tree at the same time. And there are lots of opportunities for animals to eat lots of those fruits and carry those seeds away. It's also good for farmers because they're going to have all their peaches on the peach tree ripen at the same time, so it's super easy to harvest. However, ethylene will also cause your fruits at home to ripen faster. So if you have some unripened apples and you want to ripen them up, take a ripe banana, put that ripe banana next to your unripened apples and they will get ripe super fast. If you want to slow down the ripening, wash off that ethylene and keep your fruits away from each other, and that will slow down the ripening process. And we have accomplished all of our objectives. We talked about those hierarchies of structures, cells and tissues and organs, organ systems and organisms. We talked about the need for integrating all of those systems. We talked about emergence, that the complex organism has a whole lot of properties that do not exist in the lower levels of structures. We talked about phytohormones, how they can lead to phototropism or thigmotropism or all kinds of other tropisms. We talked about interactions between auxins and cytokinins, and we wrapped up with our little look at ethylene. Great work today, my friends.